श्री कृष्ण दिव्यो Chapter 25 Namabas The Reflection of the Holy Name The next evening at dusk Vijay Kumar and Vajranath approached the saintly Babaji and offered dandavat obeisances unto him When it was appropriate Vijay Kumar said O oh, master please be merciful and fully explain Namabas We thirst to hear about the holy name. The saintly Babaji replied, "You are very fortunate. To understand the holy name properly, you should first understand three things: Nam, Namabas, and Namamparad. The pure chanting of the holy name, the reflection of the holy name, and offenses to the holy name." Now I will explain Namabas, the reflection of the holy name. What kind of reflection is it? And how many kinds of reflection are there? The word abas has three definitions. Kanti, light, chaya, shadow, and pratibimba, reflection. An effulgent object manifests light. and also creates shadows in this way the son of the holy name manifests as namachaya a shadow of the holy name and nam pratibimba a reflection of the holy name the wise speak of bhakti bas a partial presence of devotional service bhava bas the partial presence of ecstatic love of god nama bas a partial presence of the holy name and vaishnava bas being a vaishnav in part each of these abases is divided into two aspects pratibimba a reflection and chaya a shadow how are bhakti abas bhava bas nam abas and vaishnava bas related to each other A Vaishnav chants the holy name of Lord Hari. If he chants the holy name with bhakti bas, then the holy name will manifest before him as nama bas, and he himself is a Vaishnava bas. The words bhava and bhakti refer to the same thing. They are called by different names because one is contracted and the other expanded. In what condition of life is one of vaishnava bas in the shrimad bhagavatam 11247 it is said a prakrita or materialistic devotee does not purposefully study the shastra and try to understand the actual standard of pure devotional service consequently he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees he may however follow the regulative principles learned from his spiritual master or from his family who worships the deity he is to be considered on the material platform although he is trying to advance in devotional service such a person is a bhakta praya a neophyte devotee or a bhakta bas for he is a little enlightened by vaishnav philosophy after quoting this shloka babaji continued The word shraddha in this verse means shraddha bas a partial presence of faith when faith is directed to the lord alone and not to the lord's devotees such faith is called chaya a shadow or pratibimba a reflection this is the faith of ordinary materialistic people it is not the spiritual faith of pure devotional service because a bhakta bas a person who is partially a devotee has faith and worship that are material in nature a bhakta bas devotee is also called a prakrita bhakta 
or a Vaishnava boss. Lord Mahaprabhu said that Hiranya and Govardhan were Vaishnav Praya. The word Vaishnav Praya means a person who, wearing beads, tilak markings, and other things, looks like a true Vaishnav, although his chanting of the holy name is only Nama Bas. Such a person is not a true Vaishnav or Shuddha Vaishnav, a pure Vaishnav. If an impersonalist accepts the various outward markings of a Vaishnava and chants the holy name, is he then a Vaishnava Bas? No, they cannot be called Vaishnava Bas. They are offenders. They should be called Vaishnava Parati, offenders to the Vaishnavas. They who take shelter of Pratibhimba Namha Bas, the reflection of the Holy Name, and Pratibhimba Bhava Bas, the reflection of ecstatic love for the Lord, may be called Vaishnava Bas. But it is not right to call the great offenders by the name Vaishnav. They should be called something else. Please explain more clearly the nature of the pure chanting of the Holy Name so we may understand it better. When a person who chants the Holy Name is Anyabhilasita Sunya, freed from all material desires, Jnana Karmadi Anavrita, free of impersonalism and fruitive work, and Anukulya Bhava, favorable to Lord Krishna, then his chanting is pure chanting of the Holy Name. Here, the word anyabhilasa does not refer to the desire to taste transcendental bliss that comes when the spiritual holy name is openly manifest. Anyabhilasa here refers to the desire to attain impersonal liberation or freedom from sins as a result of one's chanting. If these desires are present, then one's chanting of the holy name will not be pure. If one is not freed from the desire to enjoy so-called benefits obtained by gyan, impersonal speculation, and karma, fruitive work, then his chanting of the holy name will not be pure. If one throws far away all feelings of enmity toward the Lord and maintains only favorable emotions directed to the Lord, then one's chanting of the holy name will be pure. In this way, you can see that when one's chanting is freed from Nama Parad and Nama Bas, then his chanting is Shuddha Nam, pure chanting of the Holy Name. Lord Gorachandra, the purifier of the Kali Yuga, has described this pure chanting in the following words. One should chant the Holy Name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street, one should be more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, and ready to offer all respect to others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. <laughs> 